a very significant breakthrough has occurred in the world of AI art. Some of you guys might have already heard about this already, but it's very exciting. Basically, this allows us to take stable diffusion images and edit them with text prompts. Think about this like ChatGPT, but for editing AI images. Yeah, lots of really exciting stuff, and I'm super hyped about this. It's already been added to a few different applications around the web because, of course, it is open source, and we'll talk about those in a separate video. I just want to go over the base technology today, and I want to go over the Hugging Face demo, which, of course, is free for you guys to try out, and I highly recommend you guys try this thing out. And, of course, if you guys make anything super cool, please send it in my Discord down below, which is loaded with great AI resources, by the way, for you viewers at home. I'm super excited to get my hands on this thing and really test it out. First though, let's take a look at the technology under the hood. So this is the project page for Instruct Picks to Picks. Again, this is open source software. There's also a GitHub page here, which I will link down below again. Open source means anyone can take it and modify it and use it in their projects. So open source is really great for everyone. It's great for the whole community. So seeing something like this, this is just a great contribution to the this technology and improving it further. So you can already really just by staring at these images here, these test images, we can get a good idea of what is going on here. Essentially, we type in a text prompt here, similar to the way you would honestly talk to something like ChatGPT. This first example, swap the sunflowers with roses. The original image here, this is what this image on the left hand side is, some beautiful art or something like that. And it is able to read this text prompt, understand it and internalize it, and then convert all of the sunflowers into roses while still maintaining the original aspects and qualities that the previous image possessed. So really, really fantastic stuff. I mean, think about how easy it is now to edit images with this technology, and it's only going to get better. So, you know, people in the future, we're not going to have to learn all this crazy Photoshop stuff. And Photoshop is a fantastic program, don't get me wrong, but this is going to make pretty much the average everyday Joe able to edit photos like a professional and really bring their art to life. So it's just going to allow more and more people to express themselves creatively. Really cool stuff. Really is a logical build off of the original Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey and Dolly 2 tech that we've seen, the AI text image tech. Add fireworks to the sky here for this. This next one, we start out with this image of the Eiffel Tower and it sets it to dusk because it's still trying to maintain the original daylight here a little bit. So it adds the fireworks in the background like you would expect and also changes the lighting you'll notice on the Eiffel Tower itself. So it's definitely doing more than just replacing the background. For example, this is advanced. Again, they show this other example here, replace the fruits with cake here, does the same thing and you sort of get the gist for all of these. There's a lot of really fascinating stuff here. You can really talk to this thing as if it was a person, for example. So you could say, what would it look like if it were snowing? And it does its best here to create a rendition of this image as if it was snowing or turn it into a still from Western. You're giving it direct instructions, thus the instruct picks to picks name. This one is super cool here. You can see the original still from Toy Story movie and they turn that still into a Western here and they give them like these this realistic face. And this is really a crazy image. And I've seen this floating around Twitter before, actually. So this has been in the works for quite some time. Make his jacket out of leather here. You can see it takes the drawing and then it converts just his jacket and really leaves pretty much everything else of the image quite untouched here. There's a little bit of difference in some of the areas, but pretty much everything else is untouched. So they explain in the abstract here exactly what I just told you guys. You give it an instruction and it does the instruction by editing. So to actually obtain the knowledge, basically the database that's really fueling this model, they're actually using GPT-3, which is really, really cool. No wonder you can talk to it so well. I mean, GPT-3 is very closely related to ChatGPT, which is what I compared this thing to earlier. And then they also use Stable Diffusion. So this is basically, you can think of like GPT-3, Stable Diffusion mashed together to create an image editing AI. So the actual conditional diffusion model that's behind this is trained on their own generated data. What's nice about this thing is it doesn't require a per example fine tuning or inversion. It just edits the image quickly and they actually provide a really great example of this as well, which I thought was super cool. Basically, they're just texting this thing. And I think I've actually come across this video before, um, but you see he just texts it on his Mac 
and it takes this initial image and completely ed edits it in real time, which is really, really cool stuff. And again, interfaces that are similar to this are already popping up on other websites, and we're going to discuss those in another video. This video is just talking about this open source project. But, you know, it can do the same image as well. It understands and can build off of a previous image, so you can see how easy it is to really fine tune these little details with this open source model. And I mentioned before editing stable diffusion images, but clearly from these examples, it's more than just stable diffusion images. This is just image editing as a whole. You can put whatever you want in this thing. So there's so many possibilities. Images of your pets, for example, you could try to edit those and see how they come out. Or images of your friends and family with consent, of course. But yeah, there's just some more really fantastic examples. I love this underwater one, for example, with this Beatles. I love the Minecraft one too. These are all really fantastic. And the evening one is really, really good as well. Super cool. We can see the turn it into a 3D model or convert to a realistic photo. There's just the possibilities are absolutely endless. And again, open source machines, you guys can try this whole thing out for free. Of course, it's going to be linked down below. I'm going to stop blabbing on about this thing. Let's actually play with it. Let's try it out. So here we are in the hugging face interface. Of course, it's going to be a hugging face space here. I also want to take a quick look at the interface here. Obviously, up here is where you're going to put your edit instructions. So this would be like, make it nighttime. This is where you're going to either drag or click to upload your input image. And then this is where your output image will be your final edited image. And they've got some extra more complicated settings here that in the apps we're going to talk about later are a little bit smoothed out and easier to understand. But we'll go through these real quick steps. This is obviously how long your image is going to be processed. I'd probably just leave that at 50, to be honest. That's pretty good for stable diffusion. You can either do a fixed seed or a random seed here. And I like to randomize the seeds so you get different edits every time, of course. But if you want to stick with the same thing, sometimes it can be helpful to do a fixed seed and then just change the prompt. For example, maybe you go a little bit better fine tuning out of that. They also have fixed CFG or randomized CFG. I have not played with this yet, so I'm just going to leave it at the default fix CVG setting and we'll check that out later maybe and see if we can't get a better result with random. And then the text CFG here, this is, you know, the CFG usually refers to how closely do you want it to represent your prompt. So 7.5 is a pretty typical CFG scale that I've seen. We're going to leave it at that. And then image CFG will also leave it the default settings. But this is usually the higher the number, the more closely it tries to get to your prompt. Different prompts require different CFG scales. And they actually have a little bit of text down here that you can read if you're having a little bit of problems trying to get this thing to work the way you might want it to. Because definitely tweaking settings and changing stuff around is going to make this thing better. Let's take my channel logo as an input here and see what it can do with this. Let's go ahead and make the background blue. And we'll click the generate button here. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a wait time right now. The queue says two out of two, and it says 30 second wait time. After I post this video, I will warn you guys, people are probably going to flood the queue up with this, but you can actually duplicate the space up here uh, to decrease the wait time. But you do also have to pay an upgrade to a GPU to get faster load times out of this thing if you want to duplicate the space. It clearly was able to understand what we meant by blue, but it wasn't necessarily able to cut this whole thing out of the background. Again, tweaking of the settings and the prompt might result in a better final end product. I've taken our prompt here, made it a little bit more advanced. I said, change the background from green to blue around the lemon in the center. It did not like that one that much, I must say. Not a great start here, but it's probably because this is a pretty abstract image I'm editing. Let's try something a little bit more representative of what people are going to use this thing for. So I've done a little bit more messing around and I've got it to sort of work a little bit better here. So this example is my dog. A photo I took of him and then I said make it snowing during winter time and it seems to have, you know, added a little bit of snowy ice all over the grass here um, while still trying to maintain some of the detail in his face. This is another pretty tough example for it, I think. So here is a photo of me. I'm actually going to go ahead and crop this, by the way, guys. There is a little crop feature with this, so I can just sort of crop it right into my head. So now we'll take this image and we'll say, make him bald. So can it make me bald? Oh, oh man. Okay, well, technically it worked, but I guess that's what that's what it looks like under my hair, guys, just to let you know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, wow, it definitely worked. Now you guys can sort of get an idea for the power of this thing. I had two bad examples there in the beginning, but this is, I mean, some might say this is a pretty bad example, but I think it's a logical interpretation of what it might look like under my hair. This is a rather unflattering image of me and will give me a giant beard this time. 
Oh, okay, all right. As you can see, it, it kept a little bit less of my regular features, we'll say, and it completely sort of changed the way my face looked, but it kept the hair pretty decent, and it's definitely still, like, the same background image, at least, and it definitely gave me a very large beard, so it did something there. It worked. It's very, very interesting. It's like in painting, but without actually highlighting anything. I'm not so sure that's me anymore. All right, so now we'll take another image of me, and I want to see if they can convert me into an anime character. I mean, no complaints there. It definitely did something, I will say that. It's, you can definitely actually see, like, the style of the anime poking through there. It did lose a little bit of the details of my face, but I think with enough tweaking maybe to the prompt and definitely, like, the CFG skills and stuff like that, you could get this one to work pretty well. But you get the idea here for the base of this thing. There we go. I did a randomized CFG instead of a fixed CFG, and it actually did a better job here of converting my face and all of that stuff. Again, I think you could get something like this pretty close. And I've actually seen some examples online of people getting closer. We'll take this little lemon character guy here and let's see if we can't change it to pixel art. Oh wow, that actually worked pretty darn well. That's pretty cool. You can definitely sort of start to see the pixel lines come through on this and it definitely retained a lot of what the original thing was. I think this one you could also get down pretty darn well. This is cool. So this image here is just an image I took of, you know, some beautiful outside nature. And I said, make the world on fire. So ideally, all of these plants are going to be flaming. And I mean, I guess so. It definitely got the idea of fire and what like a flaming world would probably look like with all the red glow everywhere. But I don't see any specific fire. I guess I could say make the grass on fire. Uh, it did start a little fire over here in the corner. You can sort of see some fire sprouting up, not the whole, all the grass is on fire. So I guess it technically did this one correctly. So I got this image of Walter White from Breaking Bad. We're going to make him a cyborg. And you can see it sort of tried to make him more cyborg. He definitely looks like he could be made of metal, I think. And he's definitely kind of weird looking. And then again, I did another little close up here and you can actually sort of see some metal on his neck here starting to form, but it definitely got like the colors done and everything. Pretty cool. Oh, okay. So this one I said, change the tiger into a kitten. And I mean, I guess it is sort of an image of a kitten, but it doesn't really maintain the original art style and aspects um, of the original. So yeah, I think there is still a little bit of ways to go with this tech in some regard. I think with fiddling with the settings and everything and changing them all around, you could get better results. Either way, though, it's cool nonetheless. These are some really great results here. I'm sure you can achieve these with the right prompts and settings. I highly recommend you guys try this thing out for yourself, especially because the demo is completely free. And again, there are actually free ways you can test this out on other websites. We'll talk about those later, and I'll probably teach you guys how to get better results when I have more practice with this thing in that next Next video so stay tuned and get subscribed for that one thank you so much for watching everybody and i will see you guys in the next video send your best results to discord and join the discord it's a great resource thanks for watching